What's going on guys, it's Jake here. And in this video, I'll be going over some stocks that I think are some of the best stocks for beginners in the stock market. And uh, there are honestly a ton of good stocks out there, a ton of bad stocks out there, a ton of okay stocks out there, but there's just a small group of them that I think are pretty decent for beginner investors. Because it seems like a lot of beginner investors go from uh, trying to like invest in a lot of like small market cap stocks, so companies aren't worth a whole lot, and maybe even unprofitable companies, as well as like probably penny stocks and stocks are low in price, maybe because their portfolio is not very high in value, or maybe because, um, I don't know, they were watching Ricky Guertas or something like that. And then they usually come to my channel and look for stocks that are a little bit of better picks than just kind of crappy low market style, low market cap penny stocks. But um, other than that, uh, getting into the video, and also if you're new to my channel, um, I talk about the stock market, investing, things like that. So if it's just that kind of stuff, definitely consider subscribing if you're not yet subscribed. But and now, anyways, getting into it. So the first stock that I like a lot, and I think is pretty good for beginner investors, is Berkshire. So Berkshire Hathaway, run by Warren Buffett, uh, a stock that has very, very consistently beaten the S&P S and 500. Uh, so basically, they've uh, been having a really, really good history of consistently beating the entire market as a whole. And that's something that most investors struggle to do so, but Berkshire Hathaway has been doing that for some time now. And a couple other things about Berkshire. One, it's a very large market cap stock, over 500 hundred billion at the time making this video it has a forward pe of around 19 or so no dividend yield on them but i think because they have such consistent returns every single year that kind of makes up for it and um they have been more modestly beating the s p 500 in recent years in the past 10 20 or so but um they still do consistently beat them so i think that does make up for the discrepancy in um not having a dividend yield because if you just have a company that consistently every single year has good returns then and, you know, you don't necessarily need a dividend yield with that. And um, they're not going to see any sort of crazy growth or anything like that. But I do think that is a pretty good indicator of having decent growth of beating the S&P 500 somewhat consistently. But anyways, moving on to the next stock coming in at uh, actually this isn't in any particular order or anything. But uh, next stock number two is Apple. So I think this, again, is a somewhat obvious buy here and a somewhat obvious pick regardless of what investor you are. Um, Apple almost has a trillion dollar market cap. They hit that trillion dollar mark not too long ago. Um, they have a Ford P of around 16 and a 1.456 dividend yield. So if you, if there's just really any company, regardless of what time period we're in, or you know, if it's in the next 5, 10, 20, 50, 60 years or so, um, if you're able to sell a product like Apple has with the iPhone so consistently and do it so well and just by far be one of the biggest, best known brands in the world, I think you deserve to be on this list. And yes, I'm sure there are other good brands out there, like uh, maybe more well-known ones, like perhaps Disney, you could say, or maybe perhaps other ones out there, Nike or something like that. Sure, I definitely agree there are some good brands out there, but Apple's definitely in the top as well. And they have consistently been able to give out pretty good profits, pretty good numbers for the past few years or so. And uh, just overall, I think this is an easy one to be on the list. It's a stock that I own at uh, the biggest holding in my Robinhood portfolio, and one I really like a lot. And also they have uh, not a super high dividend yield, only about 1.5% or so when I'm making this uh, video right now, but they have an enormous amount of room to actually increase this. And I really do think they're gonna to continue to do so. Um, after that, this one's a little bit more general. The next two are gonna be a little bit more general, but um, I think it would be smart to have just some sort of big bank stock in your portfolio. So you already have a financial stock with Berkshire Hathaway, but um, I think in this part, uh, we're gonna focus more on having some sort of just uh, some some of the big banks, big three, Bank of America, Wells Fargo and Co and JP Morgan. So with these three companies, they're very, very large. They're not going to get like bought out by one of another or something like that. If anything, they're gonna be buying out smart competition. And these banks honestly are just so huge and make so much money that it would be nearly impossible for any smaller banks to take them out. So just in general, these banks do pretty well. These three, I said, um, I don't think it necessarily matters a whole lot which one you pick. I personally invest in uh, Bank of America out of these three, but um, I don't think it's actually that huge of a discrepancy regardless of which one you invest in. Um, some of the, out of these three have pros, cons, whatever. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a big deal, but I do think it's important to have a big bank in there. 
regardless of which one it is. And there are some smaller ones out there that are able to consistently put out good profits and good numbers and things like that. But um, out of these three, I like all three of them. Um, if I was to order them, I'd probably go Bank of America first, JP Morgan, then Wells Fargo. But um, either way, three pretty solid ones. Um, after that, this one's gonna be a little bit more general again. This is just gonna be buying a healthcare stock. So there's a lot of really, really bad healthcare stocks out there, just to be quite frank. Um, I see a ton of people out there investing in really, really bad healthcare companies because um, they're like usually super small market cap ones, ones that maybe aren't even making any money yet or profitable at all, and ones that you know might have some potential upside if a drug they have gets FDA approved or something of that nature, or if one of their drugs get past clinical trials or something like that. And I think that is a really, really bad and speculative way to invest. So rather Rather than investing in companies like that, I think it's a little bit better to invest in larger uh, companies that have been consistently giving out profits from drugs or certain items or manufacturing parts, stuff like that, that are already on the market. Um, some big ones and three of them I invest in are Johnson Johnson, Pfizer, and AbbVie, but there's also some other good ones out there like um, Eli Lilly uh, and some other smaller ones as well, but um, those would probably be the top four that I would personally target, Johnson Johnson, um, Eli Lilly, Pfizer, and AbbVie. So those four very large bio, um, not just biopharmaceutical, but um, very large healthcare companies, ones that aren't going anywhere anytime soon, ones that are consistently uh, have plenty of products on the market that are giving out profits and are continuing to, to create more products as well. And there's a lot of other ones similar to those. Those are just four of them, but there are a lot of really crappy ones as well. And typically, if you're seeing stocks that have some sort of upcoming FDA approval or clinical trial or something like that, that they're waiting for approval of, um, those are probably ones that are very, very speculative in nature that perhaps might offer some pretty good returns if they do hit a home run on a drug or something like that. But also could just end up you know, going three strikeouts every single inning if they do not get that sort of approval. So you definitely have to be pretty cautious there. Um, anyways, moving on to the next stock. Uh, the next stock on the list is going to actually be McDonald's. So McDonald's is relatively well known for being a very large company, uh, very blue chip stock, good dividend yield, um, really just solid all across the board. And I, McDonald's, like I was saying with Apple, um, that's one of those companies that's up there for being one of the best uh, well known brands in the entire world. Um, one that's consistently done well, and they actually have a very nice dividend yield, almost 2.5% at the time of making this video. Um, 25 uh, four PE ratio, and they're also a $150 billion company. So not as big as some of the other ones like Apple and Berkshire, but still a very, very large company. One that's absolutely dominant in their industry all around the world and an industry that's probably not going anywhere anytime soon. I mean, I guess I know this is a common um, critique of McDonald's is that, you know, fast food is, you know, kind of, you know, people are realizing it's not that good for you, which is definitely true, but it's not that hard to make healthy fast food. At least I don't think it is. Um, but anyways, moving on to the next stock. Next stock is going to be Amazon. So Amazon, if you know, I was to rank like riskiest to non-riskiest companies in this portfolio, Amazon would probably be at like the riskier side and the more speculative side, just simply because it's been along, around for the shortest amount of time out of any of these companies on this list. I mean, some of these other ones like Johnson & Johnson, McDonald's, some of these big banks have been around for literally 100 plus years or so, and Amazon hasn't been around that long. But Amazon has, you know, th this is one that is going to have a higher P-E ratio. Their P-E ratio at the time of making this video is around 60 or so. They have no dividend yield, but they're almost a, uh, they're almost a $1 trillion company at the time that I'm making this video. And not that market cap necessarily means whether or not a company is good or not, but that likely means they aren't going anywhere anytime soon. And they're also a company that's just completely destroying an entire sector of the economy and just, just absolutely dominating in e-commerce and online selling as well. And just overall online retail. I mean, it, I think it would kind of be crazy not to invest in a company like this in one way or another, just simply because of how absolute dominant they are in their specific um, sector and uh, industry. But um, either way, moving on to the next stock. Uh, next stock is going to be Coca-Cola. So Coca-Cola, dividend risk crash. I think it has the highest dividend yield on this portfolio. I'm pretty sure around three and a half or so right now. Forward P of 21. Um, this is one, again, one, one of Warren Buffett's favorite stocks. Um, big blue chip company, probably not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, one that does very, very well in its uh, sector and um, industry. And one, again, that uh, has some critiques very similar to McDonald's that people are starting to eat healthier you know people uh, don't want to drink crappy sugary carbonated drinks anymore and well yes that is true in theory but the you know real case real world scenario is people are still buying these drinks people are still drinking these drinks 
And also Coke is so incredibly diversified in terms of what drinks they actually sell that I don't think that actually matters too much because they actually own a significant amount of drinks that you might think of are healthy as well. Um, one of the recent um, acquisitions actually I really like a lot. I love how many acquisitions Coke makes. It's crazy how much they just simply buy out smaller competitors. And so those are the six stocks or six groups of stocks I think are pretty solid for beginners in the stock market. Um, one last one is just simply investing in the S&P 500 by buying an ETF. The one I like the best that mirrors the S&P 500 is Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, ticker symbol VOO. If you know you can't beat the market, might as well buy it. So um, I think there's uh, it's usually a good idea to invest like 10 to 15 percent of your portfolio in the S and P 500 or just in the overall market or one way and another. And there's a ton of ETFs that do that. And I think VU Vanguard S and P 500 ETF is one of the better options out there. But anyways, guys, that's really it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, definitely let me know in the comment section what you think about these stocks as well as if there's any other stocks or companies that are good for beginner investors to invest in. Or perhaps you're a beginner investor and you know you you know feel free to share what stocks you own in your portfolio and also like i said before if you're new to the channel i talk about investing in stock market personal finance entrepreneurship things like that so if you're interested in that kind of stuff and you are not yet subscribed definitely consider subscribing but other than that guys i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching